Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Kiwi. Now as you know, um, struggling along for a little while now with the, the ride on and so today the replacement turned up. Yep, that's right, a robotic lawnmower. So this is the Mamotion Luba 5000. So there are, it comes in three models, the 1000, 3000, 5000. Um, the main difference is um, the size of the area it can cut and the amount of controlled areas you can have. So this one will cut around about 10,000 square meters and um, you can actually do up to 10 areas, controlled areas, and inside those you can have no go zones and stuff like that. So yeah, so uh, I've been looking for a while um, for a robotic lawnmower and what put me onto these ones is it doesn't require a perimeter fence um, or perimeter wire around where you're cutting. Uh, basically this works on RTK uh, G GPS and um, so if you don't know what that is it's basically GPS with a base station so it comes with a base station that you uh, put somewhere and that basically um, makes the GPS signal within uh, 20 millimeters so very accurate for it to uh, cut your lawn. What I do know is it has come with the um, accessory kit for putting the uh, base station uh, about 10 metres away from um, where the garage is, um, which is quite good. We'll see later on where we're going to put my one. Um, we've got an outside socket and I've actually built something on the side of the house to mount the uh, uh, GPS antenna, which is, which is here. So this is the antenna. This is going to be bolted onto the side of the house. And basically they just require you a 45 degree angle um, upwards and so <clears throat> our house's roof is a 33% pitch so therefore um, we can bolt it pretty close to be uh, the pitch of the roof and um, it won't interfere with the 45 degrees so this is just going to be bolted to the side of something that we've just put up actually uh, so there's the antenna so it is a four-wheel drive uh, machine and uh, as you can see it's got uh, sensors here so it will stop if it hits something and it will avoid something and even if it's not in the outer zone. So if you put a piece of furniture out in the uh, paddock, it will actually go around. And there's all sorts of ways you can set up for cutting. So you can set it to do cross hatching or all go one way, just like, you know, the a sports field. Um, so it does all sorts of things, but and it's no random, there's no random cutting. It will just generally go backwards and forwards. So we had an outdoor power point um, at this point of the house and so it was quite convenient to add antenna up here. Um, I made a bracket off the Safit and uh, mounted the antenna off that and the garage sits just below the power box with the two transformers in it, one for the garage and one for the antenna. So the quick start guide has a couple of QR codes that are quite important. One is a reference to the uh, installation manual and the other is to the app that you need to install on your phone. Um, and from there, you're pretty much easy enough to get the uh, lube to back up and start charging. And then you can run through and connect the app to the device. From there, you use the app to create boundaries um, by driving the lube around the edge of your lawn. Um, it does take a little bit to get used to. Um, first off I was just driving forward and then turning when required and then um, coming to another corner turning and then driving forward but you can actually do both at the same time and get quite skilled of it as you can see here I'm not very good this is my first time so um, it does take a bit but once you once you got that going it's pretty good you can then also set up your um, no-go zones like in this particular case there's a tree in the middle of this um, roundabout and so there's a no-go and set up for that The no-go zones are set up the same way as uh, setting the perimeter of boundary. You basically drive the looper around the area that you don't want it to go in. You also set up what they call control zones, which are connect all your areas together so that looper knows how to get from one place to another. So here's the looper's working away at uh, mowing the roundabout. 
um, what you get to see on the app as it does it is um, it's it's already drawn the uh, layout of how it's going to cut it, and as it drives around it, uh, the lines disappear off the map, um, which is quite good because you can see where it's up to. So my first impression of the loo bar is that it uh, cuts the lawns very well, actually. It does a very good job. Um, there's a couple of things I think I can improve on myself. Um, and that's a lot of that's to do with the settings in the Luba. Um, so I've actually only set up four areas. And uh, my plan now is actually to set more areas up and uh, delete some of the existing areas and cut them up to be a bit smaller. And the reason for that is that this area here that you can see is our straight off our our uh, living room and as our main area and I'm going to set that to be a fine cut so it does cross hatching, cross cutting but then along the back here I'm just going to single set that to single cut and uh, and over here by the hedge we all know the famous hedge um, it has to go under these flaxes and so I will set a new area along here that turns off the ultrasonic sensors so that it just mows nicely underneath the uh, flaxes without any problem and uh, you can do that so the ultrasonic sensors won't won't work <clears throat> you can turn them off for that and so that should work quite well the other thing that I've realized um, it does actually cut perfectly fine under the tree even though they say don't use it to cut under trees is um, so I'll set it to a new area around the back of the trees here, um, single cut so it doesn't uh, have to do double cut through here. But um, when I drove around, I actually drove very, very close to the fences and I think that was a mistake. I'll need to just back off, do another round away from the fences. It, it seems to get caught on the ev just about every second post sometimes um, along here and that's probably my fault. I've tried to get too close. Um, it got stuck under the fence over here so uh yep so that's uh another another thing to do is to redraw the outside closer <clears throat> just a bit further away from the fence um you still got to do your edges anyway as you can see here i should really zip along here for the line trimmer and uh, fix that up another one of the settings i didn't realize was uh no go zones and i have that basic i've not got set um perimeter a perimeter go around on that so um, basically it just nudges up to it and comes backwards and forwards into it but doesn't do a nice cut around it and that's just again another setting that I haven't realized that I need to do so uh, I will do that as well and that should tidy up some of the edges but I think people should be realized that um, you know you'll still need to do your edges and go around and pick up a bits and pieces so um, it's not a complete replacement for um, your lawnmower, you still need to do some work. So one of the other things I'm going to do is remove the position of the uh, GPS antenna. Um, what I found out is that uh, 90 degrees is, is um, you know, good, but 160 degrees of the sky is much better. Um, basically the receiver can receive up to four different satellite configurations so you've got the american gps system the russian glosnost system the european space agency's uh, galileo system plus the chinese um, system as well now the chinese have also put lots of money into the european space agency systems as well but um, for the luba to work well it basically has got to pick up 20 satellites of one particular type of those constellations and so the GPS receiver and the Luba must be picking up uh, uh, the same 20 satellites of the constellation so and what I found here is that obviously the receiver is getting blocked by the roof here facing towards southeast I guess you would call it facing towards that way and this way that's east that way, well, that's what northeast and that's sort of east that way and what I found is when it came over to the sheet over here so what I found is when I got over here with this shed um, obviously its main area you can see is the east and northeast area 
and you know the complete south is blocked by the shed so it actually basically said at some point in here at one point it actually lost receiving reception so the plan is to move the GPS antenna away from the house and move it across over onto the shed over here and put it up on quite some quite high poles and therefore it'll get a much better view of the sky less interrupted from the house um, the first thing I need to do for that is actually to put on power over here which is something I was planning to do anyway and um, the little charging station will sit down here with the cables going up up the side and onto some poles and I'll get up as nice and high as I can so that's and that should help with the uh, both the Luba and the receiver res being able to see the same satellite constellations at the same time well, I'm very happy with the thing it's obviously saved a huge amount of time um, in mowing the lawns it does it'll probably take two or three hours to do something that would take 15 minutes of the ride on but at the end of the day you know it just does it as it as it as it wants so I'm actually very happy with the Luba so far the app has a very good feature in it um, for support you basically click on a button and you're chatting with someone um, who's helping you out and uh, the first issue I've used that twice now once was um, I couldn't get the Luba to connect to my Wi-Fi and uh, in the end that all I had to do was I reset my Wi-Fi connection which is just inside the shed here the garage um, I did this purposely when we knew we were going to purchase a, a Luba so it's not very far away basically I'm not sure what happened but I just rebooted that and uh, the next thing the Luba was connected and they were very helpful helping me out with that and uh, the second was thing was um, uh, there was an issue with a little bit of water in the front bumper which seems to be a common problem and they basically just told me I needed to dry it out for a bit so that's fine um, another th thing is that um, I was so keen to get this to mow the lawns the first time we got it going is that it was mowing in four o'clock in the morning and um, it's getting quite damp in the morning and so as you can see from the pictures here that I'm just putting up um, the lever was very very dirty underneath uh, grass everywhere on it and we had to wash it down and um, if you want to know how to wash the lever there's a very good video by my motion I'll put a link in the description of that and uh, <clears throat> you should probably follow that and not look at anything I did about washing my lawnmower I obviously I uh, got a little bit too much water in a few places but it is designed to be washed with a low pressure hose so yeah other than that, i'm very happy and um i'll give you an update in a in a couple of months on how it's still going big thumbs up from me